Hello there, Capricorns. Um, first of all, it is the beginning of a new year. And this year, for the next two and a half years to three years, is going to signify a major planetary transit for you guys. And the Taskmaster, basically the planet of karma, the planet of discipline and responsibility, is going to be in your sign for the next two and a half to three years. And what it does is that it forces you to kind of like um, go through an init initiation process where you're going to become an adult, okay? You're going to have to leave behind childhood naivety, uh, childhood uh, bewilderment. You're going to have to leave that behind. You're going to have to look at the world through a more serious lens and you're going to have to tackle real life responsibility in a manner that um, you're not used to, okay? And the good news, though, is Saturn is your traditional ruling planet. And so many of you have already what you need to work on, but getting yourself to that point where you um, address these problems and where you tell yourself, okay, these are the areas that I need to work on. It's a big leap. And so the next three years will force you to get to that point, okay? And... Um, <coughs> I don't feel like it's going to be, you know, overly, a lot of people think that, you know, the Saturn transit is going to be very dramatic. And I don't feel that it's going to be dramatic for you guys because it is your ruler. You're already born with, you know, having full knowledge and experience. Uh, it's weight upon you. And so it's not going to be like catastrophic or, you know, life changing. It's just going to force you to do things that you already know you need to do, but you haven't found the right system or the right structure to do it yet. And so it's still a growth process where you're learning more about, you know, not so much about yourself, but you're learning more about what works for you, what processes, what methods, what technique works for you and how to best, you know, operate from that. Okay. So I feel like that's, uh, that's the major theme that we're going to be dealing with the first six months. And then I feel like the second half of this year, we're going to talk a little bit more about, you know, energetically where you need to go and what are some of the um, changes that needs to happen. The second half of the year, it's more about, okay, what's working right now? What did I do the first part of 2018 and how can I restructure and reorient and, you know, uh, tweak things around so that they flow a little bit smoother. So right now you're at the very beginning of some experimental uh, phases. So you're trying to sort things out. Okay, so let me talk about this spread. These are basically um, prediction cards and this is going to be your sp uh, spiritual advice. Okay, so I've done this spread before and um, I like the way that, you know, it, it just makes it a little bit easier for me. So I'm Re, uh, doing, I'm, I'm reverting back to this spread for the beginning of the year because I think it might be helpful for you guys. And I also um, using this deck again. So first of all, what we have here, Prince of Cups, this is an, uh, a water sign. So this is a Pisces, a Cancer, or a Scorpio, somebody that you are dealing with heavily. It could be male or female because the cards are not gender specific. And what it denotes to me is there is going to be some major transformation happening in this person's life. It's linked up here with a judgment card. There is going to be excessive uh, communication. There's going to be kind of like this person is reaching out to you. They're trying to figure out where you've been. They're trying to figure out what you're up to. So I feel like there's this exciting energy surrounding the communication between the two of you. For some of you, this is like an ex-partner that has been trying to reach out to you and they're trying to figure out where you are. Okay, so Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising. For others, this is somebody that is hitting a period of, of uh, tumultuousness in their own lives. They're, they need advice. They need guidance. They need some type of a reassurance that they're on the right path. And they need something from you in terms of like being able to help them build, being able to help them grow, being able to make sense of a situation for them. A lot of the times, I know it sounds unfair, but you guys uh, tend to be the, uh, the, the handyman in your relationships, okay? People tend to cling to you because you're always seen as the anchor, the pillar of strength and stability. And they come to you when they have problems. They come to you when things need fixing. And so I feel like this is what's 
coming in as well and i'm feeling like this is a person that's coming to you for your guidance for your uh, expertise because they're at a point where they're completely lost for many of you this is a family member that is experiencing some type of a family upheaval even some type of a relationship family drama and they're trying their hardest to figure out a fair viable solution so that they can move forward i also feel this might be residual energy um, from last month back in uh, december because i felt like the same energy for you guys when i did the general reading for last uh last month okay so I do see extensive communication with this person and I'm also sensing as well, you know, they, they have the best intentions, but their energy as a, um, this is a knight, the knight of cups, their energy is still very young, a little bit naive, a little bit starry eyed. And, um, I do feel there might be some issues when it comes to dependencies, substance abuse, dependency issues. Um, you know, like somebody who blames other people rather than, looking at how their actions contributed to a situation so i feel like you're dealing with somebody that has these characteristics okay and they're going to require a lot of communication from you um i honestly believe that you want to exercise you know a little bit of um maintaining clear boundaries in this situation because i i just don't feel like it's gonna end with just one conversation where you tell them what they to do or you give them advice and they do it I feel like it's an ongoing enabling thing where they're clinging to you constantly because they don't know what to do. And also, um, giving them advice is not going to be the end of it. They're not just going to take your advice and that's going to be the end of their dilemma. Okay. So maintaining your distance and maintaining your boundary, I feel like it's going to be uh, crucial for you. Um, next up, we have here the seven of wands. This is a card about conflict. This is like defending your territory. Um, making sure that people know where they stand with you, maintaining your distance as well, and kind of like demarcating, you know, in in, in the sand, like you, you don't cross over these lines, you don't cross over into my territory. So really maintaining your stance and putting your foot down about, you know, certain ideas, certain beliefs that you have and defending your beliefs vehemently. Um, it's linked up with the Nine of Swords, and the Nine of Swords is about stress. It's about kind of like a little bit of guilt that you're feeling as well. So if there are arguments that break out as a result of, you know, uh, energies or dealing with people for this month, it's really important for you to, first of all, stand up for what you believe in, right? We need to clearly demarcate where we stand and what we believe in. And I feel like some of you are doing this in a way that might be a little bit harsh. And so at the end of it, you start to feel a little bit guilty and you start to, you know, think about this in terms of, did I really say that in the, the most tactful way? Did I hurt some other people's feelings? You can be very, very blunt as well when you're dealing with other people and some people who are a little bit more on the sensitive side, they can take it as a huge slight. They can take it as, you know, they can take it the wrong way. So I feel like if this is what you're dealing with, you definitely want to, you know, um, tone down when it comes to, you know, defending your territory, defending your beliefs and being a little bit more, I want to say impersonal when it comes to your approach. Okay. So that means rather than saying you did this, you did that, I, um, you might want to generalize it and saying that, you know, some people are like this, other people are like that. So I feel like make depersonalizing things, you know, making things less personal and making things less um, confrontational is going to, it's going to give you um, more leeway to operate and to get your point across because, you know, once people feel attacked, they're going to start taking things personally and that's when their defenses go up and they stop listening. So I feel like there is going to be a lot of, um, there, there will be situations where you're constantly called in to do some type of damage control, I feel for many of you, uh, where somebody keeps messing up and you have to come in to be the streamline uh, 
in this work environment so that I can stand out from my peers. So I feel like you have a lot of strategizing to do. You have a lot of reorienting your priorities, shifting your priorities as well, and tackling multiple problems. So I feel like many of you who are working right now, employed, you're in a very innovative uh, environment. There might be a lot of technology that you're relying on, um, technology in terms of like having to communicate with people from afar, having to communicate through uh, tele, uh, teleconferencing, Skype conferencing, you know, some type of a long distance communication. You are also, this King of Swords usually deals with like somebody who's a consultant or somebody who's an expert in their field. So I feel like there will be an, um, an increase when it comes to your client base, when it comes to consultation fees, reworking your schedule, or you know, raising your rates, raising your price, or even demanding you know um, some type of a bonus or like a sign-in bonus or a commission or or just a bonus for yourself because you're in a field that you're where you're like an expert and you're highly sought after. I'm also sensing as well, um, you have here an air sign, so Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra in your work environment. And this person, when you, if you can look at this person, um, I, I want to say like, you know, there's more than meet the eyes, okay? So I feel like r at first glance, they're a little bit like kind of abrasive, difficult to connect with. And they have a little bit of a challenging stance about them, okay? You're going to say something and they're going to ask you why. And the thing about air sign is they don't ask because they want to undermine you. They ask because they're curious and they want to know. And in particular, they want to know about why you believe or why you think the way that you do. And they're curious as to how you arrived at your conclusion. So I feel like you're dealing with somebody that their energy feels to me to be a little bit kind of challenging and abrasive, but they're, they don't mean any harm. And I honestly feel like if the two of you collaborate, you can make tremendous strides, okay? I feel like a very similar pattern in the way that the both of you think. You're very linear and very logical. And I feel like if the two of you get together, you definitely can, um, come up with some great ideas. If it's a partnership, it can work out tremendously well for you. So I feel that this is somebody that can really challenge you to your, to become, you know, more. This is also somebody that you can greatly bounce ideas off of. They have a little bit of a challenging demeanor, but I feel like deep down, they're uh, very solid, very reliable, and combat, you know, you're in alignment with what you need to do now. So, for those of you who are students, we have here the Queen of Wands. This is you having kind of like a very uh, large following in your training group or in your school or in your class. So I feel like you're going to be quite popular. You're going to be quite sought after and you're going to, going to as well uh, be able to demonstrate a lot of how to like apply, you know, uh, theory to practice. Um, you're also going to be a little bit in the limelight where you're going to have to figure out how do I work with this solution given all the information that I know? So I feel like you and this Queen of Wands, this is a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, possibly in a training environment or possibly somebody who's training you or who's overseeing the work that you're doing or who's monitoring your training progress or your progress in general. And this is a really intelligent person and they can help you places, get places, or they can help you greatly in uh, with enhancing your knowledge, okay? So I feel as if the interaction between you and this person, it's very, very strong, but um, you're, you yourself are very, very independent. So I feel like there is a little bit of an ego clash here. They might want to micromanage a little bit. They will, might want you to open up a little bit more about what you're struggling with or what you're doing, whereas you want to be left alone. So I feel like if this is somebody that's directly over you, like a supervisor or a boss or something like that, um, you want a little bit more space and they're kind of micromanaging and they're kind of hovering over you or like looking over your shoulders. They don't mean any harm, but I feel like they're a big distraction. They're looking for more fun and stimulation and excitement while you're looking to learn things, you're looking to be immersed in your craft and you don't really have time to entertain their whims, okay? So 
I'm also sensing as well, there might be a little bit of attraction. It, it seems to me like it's one-sided. Um, attraction in the work front or in the, the academic front, okay? So it seems to me like um, there's attraction, they, they like you, but there's something here about you um, having being occupied or having your thoughts elsewhere, okay? So the last three cards here will serve as your spiritual advice, and they're read together. We have here the Tower, the Ace of Swords, and the temperance card. Let me talk about this first because this screams out to me time management. The temperance card, um, this is a Sagittarian energy and with Sagittarian energy what it does is that it makes us overestimate. Sagittarius are great overestimators, great exaggerators. It makes you um, overestimate the amount of time that you have. Oh, I'll do that another day. I'll, you know, clean it up on the weekend. I'll have time for that later, 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 later. And so there is this rampant need for procrastination. And I feel like you need to be really, really aware of what you're doing. And you need to get things kind of like lined up all in a row so that you can, you know, be more productive with your time so that you're not living in these delusions that there's going to be more time at a later date or at a later time, okay? Um, what happens is, with the temperance card, it can also lead to overindulgence, okay? Overindulging in food, wine, the good life, um, superfluous spending, spending out um, beyond your means. So, for many of you who might have landed a good job, I feel like it's providing, it's like, um, boosting you up on the socio-economic ladder. So that means right now you have a good job and you're just like, oh, I have all this money and I'm going to find ways to use the money. So overindulging in buying things, you know, exceeding your credit card limits and thinking that, oh, I have a good job now, I can get whatever I want and the job is going to be stable. You want to be very careful about that because what it's going to lead to is this tower situation where everything has been built on false premises, everything has been built on a very unstable, uh, corroding um, foundation where you might have also told yourself, these things will be okay, there's another day, there's always more time, I can always fix it, I can go always go back to it. And it proves to be problematic down the line. So the advice here is, you know, the Ace of Swords, which is about truth. It's about cutting out excess. It's about streamlining and thinning out areas of your life that have not been serving you. So a lot of the times, this can also indicate getting yourself a lot more disciplined, losing weight, decluttering your environment, figuring out what you don't need and things in your life that are kind of like weighing you down. Like I feel like physically weighing you down physical belongings or even, you know, on your body, whatever's not working, try to, you know, leave it out of your consciousness, okay? Try to leave it out of your body. So, we have some, 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 some big things that are happening here. And the major theme for you guys is don't procrastinate, okay? Get things done in a timely manner. Uh, it's going to be a busy month. I'm not going to lie, Capricorns. You have a lot of things on your plate and you have a lot of things that you need to attend to. Finances looks very stable, and so, you know, it seems to me like that's one of the areas that's really stable right now, and that's going to help everything else. So, keep at it, okay? And um, you need to really sit out and plan out your schedule a little bit better, okay? So, like, um, 5 o'clock, I need to meet this person, 6 o'clock, so forth. Um, have like a planner, have an, uh, some inventory system where you know exactly where you need to be at a certain time, or you know exactly what items you need to get, or what items you're going to need for this meeting or for this class, and have everything kind of laid out and, and situated before you jump into the month of January, okay? So... I hope the reading has been helpful. You've got some wonderful things ahead of you, and uh, I wish you the best.